script. We can talk a little bit about this question, but um, maybe Paul, you know, maybe Paul, Chris and Robin's are also going to participate in this. And what we're going to eventually do is show you a bunch of um, <coughs> photographs, and most of them are side by side, to compare, you know, different elements of expression, different kind of dogs. And, you know, we would love for y'all to, like, be sure and ask a lot of questions. And if you see something or if you notice something or in these pictures, you know, say something. Say, you know what, I like that with eye, or I like, um, you know, what about those ears? And we would really love for y'all to interact a lot, because that way you can help us know how we can help you. So if you don't say anything, then we don't know if we're um, good couple at all. So y'all feel free to tell me if there's no, no such thing as a question. We might not have an answer, but we might. We will lie about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're ready to go. Ready to go. This is the expression module of the Trinity, Trinity of the Standard. And while this module is titled Expression, and it's our focus, correct expression depends on the quality of the head properties. The standard places a lot of emphasis on head properties, and that's because expression depends on the head being constructed properly. The standard admits that expression, like the term character, is difficult to define in words. It's not a, a fixed point as in color, weight, or height, and it's something that uninitiated can properly understand only by optical illustration. And what that means is, you know what, you just have to look at a lot of dogs and you'll know it when you see it. But they, we did try to talk about how the head's constructed so you can kind of get to that place. Each of the elements describing that, I'm going to sit down so I can see this. <laughs> Each of the elements describing the head are vital to the collie being able to show proper expression. And as the standard also dictates, expression is one of the most important points in considering the relative value of collies. And it goes further to say, expression is the combined product of the shape and balance of the skull and muzzle the placement, size, shape, and color of the eye, and the position, size, and carriage of the ears. Beyond that, expression also reflects the individual's temperament, and the standard mentions that expression that shows sullenness or which is suggestive any other greed is entirely foreign. The disciples of the standard have labored to define expression, and much has been written toward that goal, but the bottom line is that the best way to gain an understanding of proper poly expression is looking at hundreds of thousands of collies over a long period of time. And we need to go back to the collie's origins to understand why a sweet expression was such a sought-after characteristic. When small farmers needed a more multi-purpose animal to help around the farm, it started with the sentence of the border collie. Now, border collies were bred to manage vast numbers of sheep on large, expansive territories. They were required to work far from the handler and control many animals at once. A small 30, 40-acre family farm needed a much quieter, multi-purpose stock dog. These farms usually had a few dairy cattle, maybe a few sheep, and small flocks of chickens, ducks, and geese. These farms also had much of their acreage and planted crops instead of pasture land. So for maximum efficiency, livestock had to be managed quietly. A dog could help bring cows from the field to be milked, move sheep between pastures and protect livestock and birds from predators. It necessitated a dog that could perform these functions quietly without stressing valuable livestock. Maybe a quiet nudge to a flighty lamb or a walk around the fence to redefine boundaries for chickens. In addition, a soft, non-threatening countenance was a valuable tool in a college box to optimize his performance. These family farms also engaged all family members and sometimes neighbors to ensure they were managed efficiently. So a high desire to please, loyal devotion, and freely biddable disposition were greatly prized as the collie evolved. Farmers breeding their own stock dogs began to realize these qualities could be recognized by the dog's expression. And think about the different breeds that are in the herding groups and the different jobs they do. Like the, think about the Australian cattle dog. There's nothing sweet about that face. And it was, you know what, cattle are a whole harder thing to manage, and they managed a whole lot of them. And they had to have a more threatening kind of expression. But, you know, our colleagues didn't do that kind of job. They walked around the farm and they just, you know, they didn't want the livestock to think they were going to eat them. <laughs> you know, they were just going to be nice to them and say, hey, you know, come across that line there. Um, that intimidation is reflected in the expression of, of the cattle dog. 
and some of the, and like an organ. You know, they're, they're more intense, their eyes are bigger, their ears are pricked, so there's like more space there. And if you understand, like, um, anybody know what, what we talk about when we talk about eye and, and border collies and hurting? And that intense <coughs> glare? Well, we didn't want that, so they needed to, although we evolved from the border collies, they wanted to breed that part out of it because that was not something that they needed on their farms at all. And you know what, it still kind of persists in the breed, like some of the real intense herding dogs will still show it, but um, that's not what we're talking about here. And think about, um, when I was writing this, I was thinking about some of the breeds that, that are very intense and intimidating. And think about their, um, the proportions, the size of the head in proportion to the dog. I'm like a Rottweiler. He's got a big old head. He's threatening. His eyes are shaped or are, are round. They're forward. They're yellow. I mean, when you look at that dog, you know that you know you don't want to mess with it. Um, and same thing about I mean, think about like all the skin on his face and his and these jaws and these lips and things and how threatening and intimidating that is. But then you think about a collie and he's got a very light head. The ears are tipped, so they're not so. You know, like, there's just a softer, sweeter look, and all the skin is tight and smooth, and the head is light, and the eyes are set so that it's smooth under here. And how all those things contribute to that sweetness that, uh, that we desire. And all those things are described in the standard, you know, as the way the head is constructed. So, uh, I kind of made up some of this, but I kind of think it's true. <laughs> because it's kind of when you look at colleagues, it's, and the way I see. So the head properties are really critical to the colleague being able to express, to show the, the proper expression. So now you understand the origin of the uh, desire for sweet expression. It helps us understand that breeders began to realize the best expression resulted from definite combinations of head properties. And since those properties are not naturally occurring, they become more prized due to the difficulty in consistently maintaining them. Orrin Kim, who bred Lodestone and was one of the pillars of our breed, um, said, some of us head hunters consider the head the most important part of the collie, but to justify this, the part inside the dog must be considered equally important with the outside. It is this revelation of the inside by the expression which gives it the great importance it holds. And Steve Field said, smoothness, symmetry, and balance are the significant words in head quality, and balance is the most important. Expression is the sum total of the head quality, and you're not going to find out what expression is without seeing it. In a 1951 Dog News article, he elaborated, true collie expression like character is difficult to define. It should radiate a look of inquisitive, alert intelligence, giving a suggestion of sweetness to the bitch plus a bold majestic dominance in the mature male. It should be free of any suggestion of wildlife flightiness or timidity or timidity or foreign appearance. And John Buddy's words are further enlightening. The most important thing to think of when judging colleagues, I would have to say, is expression. I came to that conclusion after many years of careful study and observation. <coughs> the characteristics which create the desire desire and expression of intelligent inquisitiveness are the same characteristics that I feel create a correct head. I believe it's impossible to have correctly set eyes on a head that flares or which does not have a flat frontal bone. When stops are misplaced or there's lack of correct chiseling and foreface, it is also impossible to have correctly placed eyes, which is distracting. Ear set and carriage also have a direct impact on the desirability of correct expression as well. I find, therefore, that most dogs that really do have the correct expression generally have, at the very least, a moderately correct head. Because I feel good expression is generally the result of correct head structure, I feel the judges who know good expression generally know proper head structure. And James Christie comes close to defining expression in words. True collie expression is the grand ensemble of all these essentials combined with an inherent aspect of radiant, illuminating intelligence expressive on occasion of emotion, of feeling, of understanding, and with a display of bright, quizzical look of interest in moving things and, chat and changing sounds, coupled with a coordinating throwing up of the ears, a necessary part of that alive attitude when on the alert, when approached, when addressed, or when listening. 
So we start with the page. Expression in your puppies are already good. Absolutely. Okay, how are you? Know, right now, <clears throat> you know, expression early before the eyes are open, just for the for their place. Just by the set of the eye. Right. Mm -hmm. I can tell which ones are going to have the beautiful little yeah. eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These guys are like, I guess that was what, maybe five weeks. Mm -hmm. How long is that been? Uh, she was probably three months. And that little guy, I think, was like three and a half. Did you see the smooth head? I don't know where that came from, but that looks like about four months old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like to take pictures of them when I was baby. So mm -hmm. My favorite time is two weeks, so six weeks, nine weeks, and twelve weeks. Eight. And a lot of times my camera shows me something that I'm not seeing. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Now, when you go back and look at them, mm -hmm. when they're older, do you find things that you say, I didn't see that in the picture then, but did you? Well, but, I mm -hmm. started doing this one, um, early on when uh, Marsha Keller used to let me come over and, and do that. And I followed some of her dogs all the way through to see how they look from, I saved all the slides. And it slides in. And see how the dog looked when I grew up. Mm -hmm. So it helped me to learn the stages <coughs> and the certain profile stages that I like so I can end up with a flat back skull. But yeah, I, well, of course I've learned. So pretty much what I like in three weeks is what I like later. You know, this is Barbara Satterbone. Great Solis Collies, great several national winners, and a bunch of really pretty things. So she knows what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to do a lot of monkey business at home. My husband's always mad at me. <laughs> the computer is full of pictures, but I don't care. That's yeah. how you learn. <laughs> so you, you, know, you have to look at millions of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> what I think is fascinating is it is with puppies, um, at least with mine, they go through, you know, like it maybe three weeks they have is their eyes are open and they have these like really pretty little faces mm -hmm. at five weeks they're all pets mm -hmm. because they're round eyed and i'm looking at them like I, i'm just gonna love you and i know you're you, you know it's gonna come back mm -hmm. and it's just the development of the head and then by the time they're seven to eight weeks you know they they've got their pretty little faces back and they don't lose it after that. Mm -hmm. So what I think when I look at these, the things they all have in common is their the, their muzzles are so smooth and round already. It's like honey lines are them, or there's not veins or corners or anything. It's already so much of that one is you know, it's just everything is smooth. Perfectly even too from the back from the occipital bones and the stop. And the stuff and the end of the nose. Mm -hmm. Then the standard talks about that. It says the muzzle, length of the muzzle should be balanced mm -hmm. to the length of the skull. And they should be about equal, right? Mm -hmm. And then those puppies' eyes are set not too wide and not too close together. You can actually see where the stop is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, out. I was just going to yeah. say mm -hmm. if these are my puppies and I could touch mm -hmm. them. I can guarantee that my thumb would go yep. right here, and I know that I would love what I felt. Mm -hmm. I know that that stop is right where I want it to be. Who is that? Would be clean on the side. Is this one growing up? I'm not sure who this is. Oh, that's okay. um, Barksdale Run to Good Bay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. <coughs> Her name's Melissa. She's a fortune hunter daughter, and she is, she's beautiful. No, she's, she's like the, seven years old. Now. Oh, she's seven years old. So what do you see when you see the difference in the markings? Distracted by the split face. Distracted. But does he have a pretty expression? No. No, I think he does. See, this is what's fascinating. It said everybody has a, their eye is drawn to a different, you know, what Barb may think is, is a beautiful expression, somebody else, you know, and, and vice versa. I think it's a little bit harder on the split face probably to see, because I get from here, I can't really see yeah. the black side of the eye. Yeah, you can't see the eye But, but well. to me, I think, I mean, they're nicely set. I can see that in here, and I I find the split face draws me. I'm drawn. Yeah, yeah, like that. And that draws me. Just wants it to correct. Yeah. And, and is it's, it hard to look at though? You have to look a little harder at it. Well, well, I know. I see. I well, see you you're having like split. Well, what you're having with the split face. Was, yeah. yeah. So, I I just find it just with they help. draw your attention to me. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think you know. Yeah. I, it may be the picture, but to me, it's it's a little harder to see. The try oh, the bats, mm -hmm. yeah. the side. Yeah. Maybe the the try yeah. are hard to photograph anyway. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then there's the blue eye too. You're drawn to the more silvery knot because it's on the dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just looks like the silver. He's got more muscle. Mm -hmm. Compared to the other, you know, it's just more, to me, more balanced than the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little bit wider in her eyes. Let's go back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nancy? When somebody says um, that, because I'm a little novice at this and I don't read, but they, they said he has better at details. Is there something specific that they're referring to in those terms? Depends on who's saying it. What would that mean, Carol? Detail? Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it means that they have the pretty round muzzle, that their stock is just perfectly set, and I am, you know, fanatic on stock. Uh, I, I want it to be really clean on the sides. I don't want depth of head. I want a beautiful lip line. I want like my mental picture of, of you know, the perfect head piece. That's detail to me. Mm -hmm. And it is in the details. When you talk about a stop, I know where it should be at the corner of the eyes, but they talk about a slight perceptible. How much is slight? I mean, how do you judge that? Well, that stock is different in different parts of the country, I think, don't you? Different we have one standard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I've noticed over the years, there's a different interpretation in different areas. Picture a Sheltie stock. Mm -hmm. That, to me, is a very prominent stock. Okay. You have mm -hmm. the muzzle plane here, you have the back skull plane here, and then, you know, you have this large area for the stop. That is a prominent stop. I wish we had a profile picture. Oh, Where no. is the beginning and end of the stop on these two dogs? Well, I well, personally know this dog. You can see that one. And, yeah. I mean, you can't see where the stop is. Right. This, I mean, really, I mean, this dog is like this really pretty stop. You can see it from here. <laughs> The bottom of the bottom. Oh, where is it on this uh, split? I see higher. That's really hard to tell. Yeah, because of the split face. Okay. And you know, to me, the eyebrow becomes part of the stock. It really, really is. It just 
Is it, like to me. Oh, it's got frames and everything. Oh, yeah. There you go. You can't even talk about stock looking at it. You know, the stock is, is something you can visualize in profile, but if it's right, then it affects the expression at all. Yes. So it's kind of hard. You know, Actually, I think most of the photographs, the pictures we have, these dogs have got good stocks. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. knowing the dogs, too. I think what you said that was interesting about the eyebrows because um, I never really looked at it with Nancy. I was watching her room once and she pointed that out. And once you look at that, you're right. I mean, I, but how does that really fit it? Can you put that in words? It helps with the perceptible stop, and then the arch of the eyebrow leads into the flat skull. Well, the standard says there's a slight prominence of the eyebrow. Mm -hmm. Chris, can you see the stop on the I can't head? from this but angle. It's um, just, yeah, it's just the picture's not taking a straight on you. Yeah, yeah, it's it's you know, it's hard to judge because it's a different angle. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. the silver is really she's mm -hmm. he's looking right at you. Okay. And mm -hmm. this one it's it's not quite not quite, it's kind of an angle. You know what's interesting to like comparison, like this one doesn't have some, as much muscle as mm -hmm. this one. Yeah. But, this is something that was really hard for me to understand for the longest time, was fill under the eye. Mm -hmm. And I think these are really, I don't know, I kind of think that's the way it's pretty close. I mean, they're just real different. Is this the younger, but this one, younger picture? Right. But I mean, that one is filled under the eye, mm -hmm. the one on the right. You can see it's round and smooth. And this, can you point right under that blue eye And this one? Right there. It's just not, see, it's kind of like a little shadow. Mm -hmm. Where this one is all, you know, the, the light hits it instead yeah, of falling away. Just the markings under that blue eye. is actually a sable merle and I'm going to blow you away. She has two blue eyes. <laughs> really? But notice that her eye shape is such you just do not see that she has blue eyes. Is that girl kind? No, this is Savannah. Oh, you can barely see in this eye that just a, a tint of the blue. Yeah, she's a blue-eyed sable merle. Now I'm going to ask another question. You see a lot of the collies that have a little bit of tip to their ears, and you see some collies that have a lot more tip to their ears. You see some that one tips beautifully, and one tips just a little bit different. Does it make, as long as it, it doesn't take away from their expression, does it matter? It, to me, it doesn't matter. I mean, I hate the ears that are just like mm -hmm. a little too perfect. Mm -hmm. I like them. Um, the standard says that what it's a tulip tip and um it doesn't say half, half tip yeah you know some now you see that are like halfway over i like the but yet and there's a, a slide a little bit later on i think the ears can affect the expression mm -hmm. because sometimes i get dogs in the show that their ears were not worked with and like they're a little bit white or something, and I'll just bring them up and, you know, like tip them over, and I'll go, look at the difference this would make mm -hmm. if these ears, you know, had been taped and, and work with a little bit more instead of having a wide ear set, and, you know. It, fra it frames the face. Mm -hmm. Gives you yeah. The, it, I think it does. The ears can help with the expression. Debbie, do, the you think, Debbie do you think you can, um, create a, a, a better, like a, a dog that is born that has a wide ear set, can you really bring it to the top of your head by leaving those ear sets in for You ever? know what? We can trim it. Okay. 
And, and I want to make a point here. This is one of my bugaboos. This breed is beginning to have some of the best groomers and some of the best fakers. Mm -hmm. And it's something that's beginning to really bother me. And I'm a handler. It's my job to make them beautiful. But my goal as a breeder is that when I open my kennel door <clears throat> and I have three old ladies that are running around, the youngest is 10, the oldest is 12, and they have these beautiful faces, you know, the little dignified faces. But when I open that kennel door and I look at my dog's faces, I want to see their natural beauty. I don't want to see it with makeup on. I don't want them to have to wear makeup for me to be able to see how beautiful their expressions are or their headpieces. When I open the kennel door in the morning, I want my heart to flutter. That's one of the goals for me as a breeder. Did I answer your question? Yes, ma'am. I get sidetracked easily. This lack of sleep. This is, this is the only, only thing that's been photoshopped. <laughs> all, all these pictures in here are absolutely real and from good photography and not photoshopping because we want them to be real. So it's amazing the difference between, you know, a photo that's a little dark. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can tell that this is is a bit. I mean, I can so tell it's just a bit. She's the same age. Yeah. Same yeah. Same yeah. Yeah. This picture was painted. This is I'm going to say that this bitch was like six or seven. She's, she's ten and a half now. Would be about right. <laughs> Dark picture. White picture. Uh -huh. See you. Yeah. Yeah, and these are not like my dogs or anything. It's just that I might have been there from the photo shoot or, you know, I know them. So. No, same dog. Dark picture, lighter picture. This is the same dog. I can see like eight or ten months here. <laughs> Probably four or five in the adult picture. You know, a pretty face, but you can tell that, you know, here's the youngster. He didn't quite have to fill a muscle as he did as he got older. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is Champion Fury's The Spirit of Legends, which is behind a, a lot mm -hmm. of that group. What if we um, turn the lights off with those eyes with a little bit? Sure, let I mean, the pictures are not. Oh, uh, oh okay. yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should just do it in the dark. You want them all off, Nancy? I think that's good. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's pretty high on that chart. Mm. Now I'm a photographer, and I love, just like you, and I love looking at dogs mm. in certain light, and I can go outside, like, sometimes when there's, like, a storm coming, and late in the afternoon where the sun is low, <coughs> the clouds are above, and the light reflects around the dogs and it softens their faces. It's amazing what light does bouncing off their faces and how it changes their expression or how you can see another little nuance in it that you hadn't noticed before. I mean, I would just yeah. take a chair and a glass of wine out there and watch the dogs and mm -hmm. study them. And I see something different. You know? It's like reading the standard. I find something different every time I read it. <coughs> Can you see the difference in expression? Mm -hmm. Same dog. Mm -hmm. I think in this one he's probably going, that's a cat. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so he's got kind of a, like a, the eye shape is the same, but it's, it's just not as soft. And then as he, you know, he softens up starts to open his mouth, everything just becomes so much softer. We're trying to figure out what, what changed. I think the ears changed a little bit yeah. on that one. Yeah, it looks like the eyebrows. It looks like his muscles. It is. 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, he's going, that's pudding. I heard about the middle of the cat. And over here, he's like, oh, it's just, you know, it's not a problem. <laughs> that lip line, if it were loose, loose, it wouldn't be that pretty. Yeah. See how the lip line actually goes up? Mm -hmm. And to me, expression is the sum of the entire head. It's not just the eye itself. I mean, the eye shape and, and where it's set is very important, but there's other factors that go into it. Well, it's just like Steve Field and some of them were saying. It, it, it shows like the, the dog looks at, you know, what is his, his whole personality and identity comes through his expression. And they, they have like lots of expressions. That's why we love collies, that they're so expressive in their faces. And they have so many tools to be expressive. Their ears are different, you know, than like a, a goga who doesn't, can't do as much with their ears as a collie can. I mean, I really think like a lot of, in fact, there was, there was a study about like dogs have like 150 different expressions and maybe 70 percent of them were primarily created by the ears, not their eyes. Mm -hmm. But those are the muscles that would change this much, you know, what, like opening the jaw and stuff, that, those are, are muscles, but the eyes around, the muscles around the eyes are mm -hmm. not as flexible, but the ears, I mean, it's like they go all over the place. Oh, you see a sable smooth puppy that draws, and draws their ears up and they get those cute little wrinkles in there. I just love that. So even with the, uh, look how smooth are his muscle is here. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, there's a little twinkle inside on the right one to me. It's because he's full of mischief. Look at me. Look at me. But it's interesting that the one on the left um, is sort of like staring you down and you're checking you out, and the, uh, the, the one on the right is like, okay, let's have a conversation. It's, is there a happy, the one on the right, besides the smiles, just like a happier. Have your eyes and your eyebrows and the whole, and just like the little tilt of the head, and it just, it's it's very sweet, and it, it, it all is part of the color smile and expression. You know, the European standard has the expression, and they call it um, impassive dignity. Mm -hmm. That the expression should reflect impassive dignity, and I mean, I I think our standard is a little bit different because we want dogs to have animation and then smiling and stuff like that. But I can look at this and go, you know, yeah. that is impassive dignity. Yeah. I mean, he is so he's dignified. Mm -hmm. he's, he's like, he's a baby, but he's still, you know, he's got like a sense of itself, you know, feels good in his own hair. <laughs> beautiful hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, he should. Um, yeah, does he have a mirror that he can look at himself? <laughs> <laughs> you know he is. <laughs> this is a dog who tried to pull my Sweats me on every morning. <laughs> <laughs> that dog, you know. Full of mischief. That, that's him, yeah, full of mischief. <laughs> Such a pretty soft face. Mm -hmm. That was good to look at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is like a very mature, mm -hmm. fully grown big boy dog. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's just told the joke that he's standing there going to store it. I mean, all of this is like so, so elegant and so secure in his own being. Ones with their mouth not open looks like they're um, all business. Mm -hmm. I have a job to do. I'm going to do it. 
you know, see me here, everyone is like that impish, you know, I'm going to be bad, just wait until his pants are coming down. There's no doubt that this is a girl, mm -hmm. and by the way, and that's important that you should be able to look at it now. And Stater said that, that you should be thin. You know, when I look at a, at a dog here, it's like a really pretty face, I'm just drawn to it. It's like I want to go up and, and, and meet it, you know. And, and I, like this bitch, I know that as I walk up to her, she's probably going to jump up on me, you know, wagging her tail and saying, you know, hey, Mom, the world's great. This is probably an 18 month old dog. An 11 year old bitch. Mm -hmm. hard to see expression and I try. I think tries are the hardest. I mean, when you see a beautiful expression on a try, I think that is probably the hardest to find mm -hmm. in all the colors. And I just, I think the tries, when you, when you see it, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just, it should be rewarded. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. wonderful when you have it. It's just I think it's, it's, like, I think it's easier to see in person than it is to capture. Yeah, yeah. The exactly. Line. Line. You know, it's, it's hard to capture. Just, we have to get it perfect. Mm -hmm. You can see it that picture. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Can you um, comment on how I set affects expression? Mm -hmm. And it's it's something that I'm not. You know, I don't know that I understand very well. You don't need huh? <laughs> <Of> me. <laughs> How does it affect expression? Okay. Okay. To me, this bitch has got like a beautifully shaped eye. But let's take it and take, take the corner and make it go up. The outside corner. If you had it go up, you would have more of a, what I call like a oriental expression. Mm -hmm. You know the other thing, and see I, I get sidetracked, it's the way my mind works, it's called lack of sleep, so <laughs> it's, it does, doesn't just, but these dogs don't have, to me, overly small eyes or large eyes. It's just a very pleasing size to their eye. Um, what about, um, I think something that confuses a lot of people, the standard calls for an almond-shaped eye, then a lot of people start talking about triangles and Oh, in two oh, and eleven o'clock, or is it two and ten? Two and two. Ten and two. Yeah. Drives me crazy. <laughs> but I think it's it's kind of like the angle we look at the head. I mean, I can see what you're seeing talking about a triangle in this dog. Yeah. Right yeah. there. And I think it's just the way it's chiseled. But definitely a round, light colored eye is not what you're looking for. Right. I've, I've noticed that some dogs, their eyes are, are spaced further apart. Two eyes between the eyes, yeah. And they, they almost look like they're at the side of the head. And then some dogs, the, the way their eyes are set, particularly this dog on the, um, on the left, the eye seems to be placed inside the head 
Um, I, I don't know how to describe it really, but it, it just seems that the, the angle of the eye is more pleasing because it's more forward looking. He is definitely got the oblique set for that eye. That's the word, oblique. Yeah. Well, as the standard says, like, the face has to be chiseled out to form a receptacle. They're not supposed to be set forward with these bones. You know, like, if you think of, like, a golden retriever or a Rottweiler or something, they have this shelf here to turn the eye forward. And probably, I think that's another part of the lightness of head and, and the sweetness. It's like the smoothness under the eye it has to create a different receptacle for the eye to be smooth. And the, you know what, another thing is we want these flat cheeks here. And without the oblique set, they're going to have handlebars made of these zygomatic arches, like, you know, like a different breed, like a golden or something, or a Shelby that has a little more forward set eye. And there would be, like if you, like right under there, there will be like a little shelf, and then <coughs> when you feel uh, like a dog's head, and like, we didn't want to show any wrong dog's head. But if you felt that dog's head, his, these cheeks would be nice and flat, because you can just kind of see that his, his eyes are chiseled. And you can see he's got no depth ahead. And you can yeah. probably visualize that his stop is in the right place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See a blunder in the guy. There he is. Stop. Those of these are beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Their eyes are like almond shaped. They're medium size. Mm -hmm. Dark. Their heads are light. And their muscles are round. Mm -hmm. Their ears are pretty. Mm -hmm. It's interesting what the camera lens does. I think it shortens this one's head a little yeah. bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though like this one's rotating, I think the camera is probably mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Too much 
and oh, uh, that, um, they'll just look like they're they're like way too much oh, in the back skull. Like but with proper weight, because they will get fat okay. on the on the top of their skull. But with proper conditioning, for you know proper weight, it won't be a spill. While you have the coin in your hand, and this is like this is one of those stupid questions. That I'm going there is no stupid question. When you talk about this dog doesn't have too much depth of head, mm -hmm. show me where you're where you're going with that. And where I wish we had a side shot. I'm a little right of this. It's the black dog. The black dog? Which one? Well, that was the one that I said he didn't have. It's hard to tell over there. That's, That's not, not a good illustration. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. I think we've, we've got, um, on the blue pitch later on, it's kind of like a three-quarter. That one. Yeah. You see how long, wide, lean? You can look at this picture, and, and to me, I just see how long and like In here, from like, I wish we had a dog here to illustrate it with. There is not a lot of depth from the top of the skull, or the, let's say the skull, mm -hmm. to here. If her mouth were shut, it would be like this. Okay. And the head planes are more parallel. Mm -hmm. And the head right. planes are parallel. Depth of head to me is when you go from here and it comes down to here. <laughs> I hate it. Yeah. yeah, and see how this bitch, even with her mouth open, see how it has a tendency to go up just a little bit? So you know that when her mouth is shut, she has this really pretty tight lip line. See, well, the line of her bottom lip and the line of her other jaw are parallel. Right. And this is something that I look for with little puppies. If they're going to have a lot of depth of head, their underjaw here will actually uh, go down. You can almost feel the underjaw. And I want that underjaw to, to be almost have a tendency to go up just a little bit, never to be going down. If it goes down, it's, it's going to be way too deep for me. Yeah, and the lip line also. The whole everything should go, you know, kind of up more towards the ears. That was called a smiley face, but so I'm laying down and I see that little smile. I'm going to give y'all a project in the veteran class. There's going to be a veteran bitch class. There's going to be a bitch shown has absolutely no depth of head. It's a smooth uh, rock. Sorry. And I, it's a rough bitch. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but I want you to to watch that class and see if you can be. You won't have a problem figuring it out. But there's absolutely no depth of that at all. You know what's pretty to me that we haven't talked about yet? I love the, the color, the lightness. I, I love the real mm -hmm. pretty color. Eyelashes. Yeah, I was gonna I just say how eyelashes are so pretty. That's so soft in the face. And like I love those old veterans when they get gray. Yeah. You know, it really makes them just they just even sweetens the whole sweetens them more beautiful. There's so many elements that, that make good expression. And everything about this bitch is soft. Mm -hmm. It's just very soft. And I think that that's what makes it so pretty. The trimming. You know, it's just, it, it doesn't have a scalp look. It's just very soft. Even the, the ears. Yeah, that's not those good. pretty little cupped ears. You know what? And they're natural, and they're not symmetrical, but they're still pretty. They mm -hmm. kind of look like the, you know, that look where the, the back stall has been almost shaved with a razor. Yeah. I don't care that. Look. Okay, so we were on the brain. Question, real quick. 
When you're saying the um, the veteran bitch to look at, um, when you're saying that she has no depth of skull, as in that's a good thing because oh, of how it is, or it's thing. okay. Yes, yeah, so hard. Okay. It is it's so hard. hard to get, and it's so hard. It's so many of them as they get older, they they may lose it, but um, it's 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 something to be, you know, one of the goals. It's just light. Everything about it is light. Is it an old one? No. Okay. The, the junior veteran? Yeah, the junior veteran. Don't tell them they're veterans, so. They're <laughs> not gone. And what do you think about the, the ear tips on these two? I was just going to ask Nancy, when was that photograph taken? I would say that was probably 1980. Okay, so and this one was taken at the Tampa Bay National, which was what? 90, um, 1992. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think she was. She was like, three of the baby. Yeah, she was involved in 90, I believe. So, yeah, <coughs> 10 years difference. I see nothing wrong with these ears. Okay, okay you know what? I'm trying to figure this out. The standard says the top quarter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're talking about from the inside corner or outside corner. <laughs> It does make a difference, doesn't it? It does. But it's like, you know what, this is this is perfect illustration of looking at lots of dogs and knowing it when you see it. And it's, it's balanced. It's all parts coming together to make it beautiful. You don't have to say that one little piece makes it. It's because all the pieces have to be harmonious. And if they are, the expression is beautiful. And these are like wonderful pictures because they're not photoshopped and they're black and white and, yeah. you know, like, these dogs, I mean, these are like timeless. Mm -hmm. I mean, they still are. these dogs back. And can you see how flat this is? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see it there. This is flat. Top skull is flat. I'd love to have either one of these bitches mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Who are those dogs? Well, this is uh, Champion Fantasy's True the Master, R-O-M. Uh -huh. That's the Shinstone dish. Shinstone's uh, Storm's Trick. Yeah. Was she a Critics' Choice daughter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is uh, uh, Alpha White Masterpiece daughter. Right, so as far as the whiteness of the skull, if you're going to see any deep touring, it's going to be mainly right above the brows. Well, actually, sometimes they're flat right here, and then they fall off as they go mm -hmm. further back. It's easier to see it from a profile. Mm -hmm. And you know something? Mm -hmm. This is like such a wonderful opportunity. When you go down to the show site, go by and look at the dogs. I mean, don't do it during show hours, but <laughs> after the show's over, you know, most of us are really happy for you to come and see the dogs. And, and I know that everybody here that's in the breed ed, we really do want to help you, you know. And so if you want to come and just look at dogs, go over dogs, is when you can really feel them, is when it all, it, it kind of makes the connection. No, these two, there's, there's no doubt that these heads are inclined to lightness. They're so light, they're so thin, I'm not just the, these two are just All right, so if, if after the show, I go down this, you know, Feel your head's big, won't offend people? When it's I not going to offend me, you know. And just ask. Because sometimes it's not at the right time. Right. You know. Right. Uh, like right after judging, you're trying to get the dogs kind of taken care of. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just, just watch if it looks like it. And, and ask. I know that in our setup, it's like an open door policy. I tell them, they're here. We want them to be able to see the dogs. So if you come, you know, after the show, 30 minutes after judging, when things are, well, my setup is always, <laughs> it's organized chaos, is what I'd say, but, you know, we're always. people call the three-cornered eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.